Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea. I'm just a lady with a bulldog, a camera, and too many opinions. And today we are going to watch something that is um, concerning. Something that's concerning. So as y'all know, a lot of people in money and a lot of people in network marketing companies and these online grifts in general will try to use faith manipulation to manipulate. That's the only way I can put it. And so this person is a pastor's wife and yikes. Hey friends, before we get too far into this video, let's take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Morgan and Morgan. When you're seriously hurt, your injury could be worth millions. And Morgan and Morgan does not settle for any low ball offers. All law firms are not the same and Morgan and Morgan is the biggest for a reason. And just like me, when it's come to copyright claim and copyright strike disputes on my channel, if you know, you know, Morgan and Morgan has won a lot. In just the last couple of months, Morgan and Morgan has seen verdicts of $12 million in Florida, which is 34 times higher than the previous highest insurance offer, 26 million in Philadelphia, which is 40 times the highest offer, and then 6.8 million in New York, which is 25 times the highest offer. The fee is absolutely free unless you win. Y'all know I want you to learn about all about your rights. I want to educate you on red flags and things like that. And if you are in an accident or injured in any way, so much can be happening. You need to know and protect your rights. So don't overthink it. Take action to protect your rights. Did you know that you can start a claim with America's largest injury law firm for Rum Your Phone in just a few minutes? Well, you can, and it's so easy. You can start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan at www.forthepeople.com slash ccsuarez. Or go ahead and click the link in the description box and in the pinned comment as well. Thank you again, Morgan & Morgan, for sponsoring this video. First and foremost, using your position of authority like this when you're in an MLM, it's disgusting. Anyways, let's go ahead and watch this video and break it down and talk about faith manipulation and other types of fallacies and red flags. Oh, it felt so good to sleep this morning. You're getting my morning voice. Yes, it is almost 10 o'clock. But um, this weekend, went on a trip with my sister and my Mane personal team, like local team, not local team, but it wasn't a, a team, like a company-wide thing. It was our like directors and down. And just my sister and I went. Um, so that was fun. It was nice to have just sister conversations and have a chance to just really focus on what we were doing. And um, I'll go over a little bit more like what we did each day and all the things. But it was just really cool to, when you're around people that want to grow and be excited and are looking to improve, not just like so much of what I'm going to share with you guys. Carl, you're in a congregation. I'm sure you have like friends and stuff. And also your sister, like y'all, you all can hang out without being a part of money. Prove not just like so much of what I'm going to share with you guys of my takeaways has nothing to do with the business that I'm in. Um, they focus a lot on you as a person. And that's one thing that I've always loved about this business from the beginning is like, I feel like I'm a better teacher, a better mom, a better wife because of the things I've learned. Enmeshment, if you will. A lot of y'all were asking where I got like my graphics for the fallacies because they were like all the same and stuff and where to learn more about all that. The internet, just Google it. You'll, you'll f happen upon stuff. But I found all those on Helpful Professor and I like that they're all like the same. And then also Choosing Therapy is another great website to find stuff like that. So for instance, this one about enmeshment, little graphics and stuff. I know I love infographics. I feel like I always have to find infographics because that's like the best way that Tony learns anything. Same though. So this is what is enmeshment. Enmeshment is an extreme form of closeness between individuals. This commonly happens within families. It's usually what it's in regards to, but in this we're talking about a cult, a commercial cult, like between a parent and a child, but enmeshment can happen in a social or romantic relationship. It involves low levels of autonomy or independence and high levels of inappropriate intimacy. So enmeshment, a lot of people will say like emotional incest kind of, but it's, you know, creating these bonds where your boundaries are being diffused and everything is just, you know, 
enmeshed and just seeping. Imagine like this type of mindset, the undue influence, all that with money, like seeping into everything else. Like she just said, how it doesn't even have to do with the business. Well, it's, it should, that's all it should have to do with. Like it's about selling shampoo and recruiting people. That's it. It shouldn't be about teaching you how to be a better person. That's not what it's about. Go to therapy if you want to become a better person. Sorry. It really, it really frustrates me when people use obviously any type of emotional manipulation, but especially faith manipulation. Y'all know I cannot stand the fundamentalists, the culty people like that, the organization of Jehovah's Witness. If you are JW, I don't need you to DM me. I've had great conversations with people, but then every time I mention that Jehovah's Witness is a cult, I always get emails and stuff of people being like, but why do you think it's a cult? And it's like, buddy, it is. Leave me alone. (laughs) I love you. Leave me alone. You'll get out eventually. You'll be okay. So I just get really frustrated. I am a Christian and people will be like, you can't be blah, blah, blah. Suck my butt. Don't tell me how to worship and how to love Jesus. Okay. <sighs> Anyways, I don't care what you believe. You can believe whatever, as long as you're not hurting anyone else, you know? All right. So that's enmeshment. And I do believe that this is a huge part of money specifically, but also other commercial cults. And then especially this, when it comes to faith manipulation teacher, a better mom, a better wife, because of the things I've learned through this business. And yes, a better businesswoman. So anyway, so Friday we got there. Saturday was like at the house learning and went out to dinner together. And then Sunday was a day of training. So the things I'm going to share are mostly from Sundays, like our day of training, um, but they had backup in the days before. So the first thing we talked about um, uh, is, and I'll just be quick behavior is your clearest and loudest language so so many times whether that's i don't know life when you're around home cooking dinner or in business like what i'm actually doing is speaking louder than what i say i'm gonna do or what i say i think i am so when you're looking at your life like what are your actions what is your behavior what is it really saying because that's what's being communicated um another one we talked a lot about this week about our thoughts and circumstances that happen in our life are neutral, right? And then you have a thought about it and a thought creates a feeling which creates either action or inaction, which inaction is an action. Um, and then that re- does your results. And I've, I've known that for a long time, like that model, like the thought model, but hearing this weekend, like the only thing that creates my feelings are my thoughts. Like answer below, like put a one or a heart or something. If you've ever said, well, that person is making me feel this way. Girl, you could have just gone to therapy and spent much less money than being in money and learned about I feel statements. I feel statements help you focus and vocalize and verbalize and really articulate your feelings. And it can help you walk through your own emotions and focusing on on yourself and being able to take like control of your own emotions. It's I feel primary emotion. I feel this way when situation happens. I feel this way because I think I, not because you, right? So, I mean, it, it's just so interesting that, again, this is a great example of, we're like hardly into the video. I know I'm getting crazy, but it's because I'm standing up. It's a whole new world. But because they will literally just be like, oh, well, I I wouldn't have this, you know, emotional renaissance or whatever they're feeling if I wasn't in money and it's like, miss ma'am, go to therapy this way, or my kid did this. And so now I feel this way and realizing that that's not possible. My thought about what my child is doing creates a feeling in myself and like the freedom that comes with that, like that nobody else can control the way I feel feel. It's a choice that I'm making because of the thoughts I'm assigning to it. Right. So anyway, I'm excited to, to like, I'm just looking over my notes and process that a little bit more. Um, but I love this takeaway with that. I can love people more when I realize that they aren't responsible for creating my feelings. It's like the pressure is off because I get to make that choice. But this is another great way to keep the focus all on yourself. And if you feel a certain way, it's your fault. If you aren't ranking up, it's your fault. If you 
aren't doing X, Y, Z, or if this thing happens, you're in control of it. It's your fault. Like you can't blame it on anyone else for saying or doing anything. And you can't blame the company, the structure, the industry, your upline, anything like that. So that's how I'm taking it because let's be honest, that's probably what happens. And that's how they weaponize these types of thought processes and exercises that they do. The scripture, and the one thing I love about my team is, um, oh, there's so much I wanna share. Uh, several people accepted Christ this weekend and eight ended up, eight, eight got baptized to show that identifying with Christ. Not that baptism equals salvation, but several of them accepted Christ and then eight um, like dedicated their life to the Lord and identified with Christ through baptism. So that was so awesome on a work retreat, imagine if I go to like VidCon and they do, or you go to a retreat or a conference or a convention for your industry or for your company, and then they baptize you or all only talk about God and Jesus. Like, listen, atheists, agnostics, y'all are safe from MLMs, okay? Or at least from money. Like it is truly, just like truly wild. Amonate baptism? What are y'all doing? Did you empty it out, rejuvenate oil in a bathtub? Please tell me they use that as holy water. I cannot, this is a cult. But a scripture was brought up a lot this weekend. And one of the scripture verses that, that was brought up was the idea that whatsoever man soweth that he also reaps, right? So you reap what you sow, that principle. But did you know the reverse? Like, it makes sense to us. I live in a farming community, right? If you plant corn seeds, you're gonna reap corn. Um, but two things from that is you don't reap what you don't sow. So if I'm wanting a certain outcome or I'm wanting a relationship to grow, or I'm wanting quality time with my husband, or I'm wanting my daughter to grow in this area, I can't just expect it to happen. I have to be sowing things. And when you sow those things, you will reap them or the opposite. What you do not sow, you're not going to reap. So if I'm choosing not to sow negative, like say so one more time. Yeah, this is, this is weird. This is creepy. It's just no. And also another thing when it comes to spiritual abuse and faith manipulation, when they weaponize this against people and, you know, like subtly have this enmeshment and seep into their trainings and their retreats and their conversations and stuff like that, that is really how they're able to, again, not only put it back on the person, but then also weaponize that spirituality and that religion against them and be like, well, just pray about it or like, oh, but like God wants you to do this and having their faith intertwined with this is going to make it so that they're not going to leave which is so sad. Not to sow negativity. I'm choosing not to sow things that will take life from me. If I'm choosing not to sow harsh words, you know, those type of things, if I'm not sowing them, guess what? I'm not going to reap them. And that works with relationships with people or even, you know, regular day life things. Um, and so that was really cool. The reverse is true with that. And then this is the last one I'll leave you with. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. And I've been like just the idea that if I want to get to X, Y, Z in my life, it's not this one big thing that's going to change and happen. Like Dustin was so fun and I'm so excited for the takeaways. But if I'm if I leave that feeling or those thoughts or that change in that one weekend, my life is going to stay the same coming home, right? Each day, there needs to be a change. There needs to be a decision made to grow and continue. So it was amazing. And what I'm reminded anytime I go on a trip, whether it's company-wide or just with our group, which is not a little group, but our group, is that it's so much fun to be around like-minded people that challenge you to grow. Here's the thing though, is are they challenging you to grow or are they keeping you in? the MLM because, and I don't want to say like like-minded people aren't challenging you or pushing you or want what's best for you, but <laughs> especially with an MLM, I mean, are they going to challenge you to see what else is out there? And if a better opportunity comes around or if they see that like this isn't good for you or that like financially this is not good for you or, you know, able to see like black and white, like, hey girl, you're losing money or this is, you know, affecting your mental health or something like that. Are they actually going to be able to be unbiased and push you to do what is best for you in your specific situation? Or are they going to try to 
use faith manipulation against you and have you stay in because it financially benefits them for you to stay in, even if you're not under them. Because if you leave, other people might see that and then other people might want to leave. So keep that in mind too. Well, that is actually it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed and don't let yourself get faith manipulated. It's such a red flag. If you're a company that literally or employer that is not a church, not a religi religious organization, like black and white, are they? No. Okay. Then why are they talking about religion? It's just, it's extremely inappropriate and not okay. And yeah, huge red flag. So run, stay spicy. I'll see you in my next video. I appreciate you. Your butt looks good and goodbye.